This is going to be a video explaining the pros and cons of the truck. I'm going to do this in three separate sections. I'm going to do the pros first, then I'm going to follow it up with the cons, and then I will follow it up with the few additional notes that it's, it's more informative and general advice than any positive or negative thing. So sit back, I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and I hope this is informative and helps you make a informed decision on if this truck is worth it for you in your game or not. So starting things off in the pros category for the 5600 truck, the 5600 is a very capable truck. It can handle pretty much anything. It really doesn't need most of the upgrades to be good. Some of them definitely make it a lot better, but without any of the upgrades, it's it's pretty good. One of the main draws that drew me to the truck originally is that it's one of the few trucks in the game with a frame that is capable of holding a three cargo slot flatbed which makes it very useful for overloading cargo, which is the next pro that this truck is capable and very good at overloading the truck bed for hauling way more than what, you know, you normally would just load onto the bed with just the three slots. A perfect example is you could, you could load six metal beams onto the back of it and it'll be perfectly fine. You'll make it to your destination. To follow up the talk of how you can load it better. It has the yellow crane, the American one, that articulates. And it also has the longest boom length of any crane. I believe it's also the strongest crane lift strength-wise for cargo that isn't a full, dedicated, massive crane. The 5600 is a very fast truck as well. Even when off-roading in some pretty rough conditions, you can just power through it on high. It, it just does not stop. It, it will just keep going. You know, you can, in high, you'll be going around, I think, 15 miles per hour, which, for off-roading in SnowRunner, is very fast. And it helps you accomplish your objectives much faster than you normally would. The 5600, because it has the extended frame for the three-slot cargo bed, it's one of the very few trucks that can take the medium logging frame and still tow another medium logging trailer behind it. So you can do two loads of logs per trip with the 5600. You could do more if you want to just overload the logs, but if you don't like overloading and you like filling the trailer with the normal amount of cargo, this is this is definitely a very good truck for logging. Which, on that note, it is also capable of taking the logging crane with the long logging trailer. Which, not, not a lot of trucks, or not all of the trucks, can do that. When the 5600 is fully upgraded and you have mud tires on it, it is pretty much unstoppable. The thing will not get stuck, even when it's fully loaded. You may get a little bit stuck from time to time in really deep mud, but even the strongest trucks will get stuck in that kind of mud. So, compared to other trucks, it is very, very capable and very, very powerful, and it will, it will get through anything with relative ease. Without mud tires, just using all-terrain tires, which they unlock at level 9. You can get them very early, before mud tires. They're pretty much, on the 5700, they're pretty much almost the same as running mud tires. Uh, I actually started running the all-terrain tires myself instead of mud tires, because I like to have the the six extra tires on the rear, instead of losing that those six, which take away some of the traction. And it, it really... I. Honestly, I think in some situations, the all-terrain tires, if you get the the 16-wheel ones, that thing just, it destroys. It shreds everything. It, it will just pull you through anything. Another thing to add is that 
even with all-terrain tires, the 5600 can off-road without ever engaging the diff lock while still being in high gear. I know you can't use the diff lock in high gear normally, but the, the point being that you don't need the diff lock. Even if you start to get stuck a little bit, it, it really does not need the diff lock. You only really need the diff lock in those really, really tough situations. The 5600 is also capable of taking a lot of different frame add-ons. It has pretty much all or almost all of the, the standard frame add-ons available, whereas some trucks, you know, you can't have specific ones for whatever reason, but the 5600 really doesn't have that problem. And the final pro, which is, it's more opinion-based, it's not necessarily fat. Personally, I think it's one of the only trucks in the game that looks good in any of the colors that you put it in, because it only covers the cab, and it doesn't cover a large surface area. It, it covers a very small area when you change the color to one of the solid colors. And it's not, like, shiny, it's matted, and it... To me, it looks it looks very nice, and it looks better than it does on a lot of other trucks. Alright, now we're going to move on to the cons of the 5600 truck, which there are a few. Despite the cons that there are, I do still think it is one of the best trucks. However, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I just told you how good it is, and I didn't tell you any of the problems that come with the truck. The first con that I'm going to list here is the one that sticks out the most to everyone when you use this truck. It has a very high fuel consumption rate, and the gas tank it has is relatively small for the amount of gas it uses. Now, I'm going to touch on this more at the end of the video when I talk about the additional notes I have, so just sit tight on that for more information on that. Now, like I said in the pro section, the truck is still capable without any of the upgrades. However, it will struggle a little bit more if you don't have the race suspension. It tends to bottom out a lot if you don't have the race suspension, which, you know, it, it makes it much harder to keep going at high speeds off-road without the race suspension. So, if you want to make the truck completely unstoppable, you need the race suspension. However, it's not that big of a deal, because it's easy to get for free on the Wisconsin map where you get the truck, which is covered in the second video that I made, showing how to get the truck and all the upgrades. Now, this con is related to the frames of the truck, which... The, the pro is that you get a lot of storage space, you get much bigger frame add-ons. The, the negative side of this is that it makes the truck longer than the average truck, and it makes your turns much wider. They're not as wide as they would be if it was not a twin steer. The twin steer element of this truck really does help it and make it so you can take those turns much easier, but you're probably still going to need to back up sometimes to make tighter turns. This, this one is standard for all trucks. The highway tires are useless on this truck. It, uh, this is less of a negative against the twins the 5600 twin steer and it's more of a general statement of fact about the highway tires they're just not good this it, which is sad because some of them do look pretty nice now if you aren't using the all-terrain tires or the mud tires you pretty much do need to use the all-wheel drive on the 5600 however the all-wheel drive is not required if you're using the mud tires or the all-terrain tires. There have been many times where I have forgotten to put on all-wheel drive because it consumes a good amount more fuel when all-wheel drive is on, so it's better to turn it off when you don't need it on the roads. And there have been many times where I've accidentally started driving off-road and I'm like, why is this not going as fast as I want? And I'm like, oh, the all-wheel drive's not on. Uh, the only downside there is if you don't have the all-wheel drive on, you're not going to be able to drive around in high off-road as easily. Now, this one is, I already mentioned this in the pros section, but it's also a con. The yellow crane that the truck has, while it is the best for boom length and pickup strength, it's not the best 
for overloading. The articulating blue Russian crane is the best for overloading, which of course this truck does not have. It's an American or North American truck. However, even with the yellow crane, this thing overloads just fine in my experience. Once I started overloading, I just did not stop. I, I am constantly overloading this truck and just running it as hard as I can, it, and it does not quit at all. Now for the final con, this one is more of a... Not necessarily a con that would apply to everybody. It more so applies to people who like to play, I guess, a little bit more realistically with transporting vehicles and stuff. If you want to transport a vehicle, you can get the ramp flatbed platforms and stuff like that. The problem with the 5600 is that if you want to tow this truck anywhere, not just by pulling it on the winch, by loading it onto a trailer, you specifically need the giant four-slot ramped flatbed trailer. It's not able to be loaded onto one of the frame add-ons that add a towing platform. Okay, now we're going to move on to the final part of this video, which is just talking about a few additional things for the truck that aren't necessarily pros or cons, but they are worth mentioning. Now, the main one is about the fuel consumption. The 5600 uses a lot of fuel. However, in my opinion, I like that for the fact that it makes me play the game a little bit more differently. It makes me plan routes ahead, and when I know I'm going on longer trips, it makes me set up fueling stops along my route. And it, it also encourages you to create a fleet of refueling vehicles, which I think is very nice if you like to play the game like that. If not, you might not enjoy this truck that much. And if you still want to use it, you could get a mod that uh, makes it better and changes the fuel consumption. I know there is at least one. I tried using it before. I wasn't a huge fan of it. And I just ended up sticking with the truck and dealing with the fuel problem. I will say... If you do intend on using this truck, and you are looking for good fuel trucks, I will recommend the White Western Star 4964. You get it on the first map in Michigan, and I've had that thing in my fleet since I started my new game as a fuel truck, a dedicated fuel truck, and it it is great as a dedicated fuel truck. That thing does not get stuck with that fuel add-on on the back. It is very useful, and it, it, can, it can take a lot of abuse. Some... Other trucks that are useful as dedicated refuel trucks are the Crocodile and the Bandit, both of which are DLC trucks. The Crocodile is in its own pack, which is not included in any season passes that I know of. The Bandit, however, I believe is included in the first season pass. So if you have the first season pass, you're going to have the Bandit. And you get it for free at the start of the game if you're playing on casual. So. It, it's pretty it's pretty good to use as a refuel truck unless you want to use it for something else and another additional note that I'll add here at the end as the final note is that with all vehicles driving at high speeds on the roads specifically can be a little bit risky with all the pebbles that just rip your suspension apart despite the fact that they're tiny little pebbles however I think this truck can still handle it it is worth it to keep in mind, though, that if you are going to be just ripping down the roads with this truck and you are taking suspension damage, it does not have a roof rack or any, like, repair parts that you can add alongside of a flatbed. You would need a dedicated repair bed or a trailer. However, this, again, can be rem remedied by your support fleet, which you can have a dedicated repair truck or when you set up your dedicated fuel truck on your route, you can bring a repair trailer with it or a maintenance trailer with it, which the maintenance trailer will give you more fuel if you think you're going to need it. The repair trailer will give you more repair parts if you think you're going to need those. So it's best to keep in mind the type of terrain and how you're going to be handling the route you're taking and plan ahead and figure out which trailers you're going to need to bring with you. Alright, well that about does it for this video. I hope this helped. I really, I really do hope this was informative. 
and that it helped you make a decision on if you think this truck is best for you and in your play style. Regardless if you do end up using this truck or not, I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you watch the follow-up video on how to get the truck and the modifications for it, I hope you enjoy that one as well. Uh, this video was... It was pretty fun for me to make. Uh, I've never really made a video like this where I did a lot of voiceover work. I think I did make a review a while ago for Saints Row 2, but I don't really remember how I did that, and I don't think I did as much VO work for that as I did this. So, hopefully I'll be uploading some more videos soon. I have an idea for a Zomboid video that I'm working on, so that might be coming down the pipeline sooner or later. That one might take a bit more work to do than this one. It's a challenge video, just because I, I don't really do challenges all that much, but I do kind of want to start doing some. Uh, I'm thinking of also getting hardware or software or whatever it would be to record, or not record, to stream from an actual GameCube because I finally have my GameCube out of storage and I have it set up and I just got a new copy of The Simpsons Hit and Run and I'm always talking about that game and I've always wanted to play it on my channel. I've always wanted to stream it and I just recently watched a video where somebody did a challenge where they tried to beat the game with the, the default starting pink uh, family sedan and I honestly think I want to try to do that but I want to see as how fast I can get it done seeing as I have played that game so many times and I guarantee despite not speedrunning it before I could probably hammer that out pretty fast it would definitely be a good few live streams if I did but I don't know I guess we'll see hopefully I get that stuff soon if I do, be on the lookout for that stream. Hoping it's going to be a lot of fun. Or that series of streams, I should say. I hope it'll be a lot of fun. Same with the Zomboid video. Hope it's going to be good. I think I'm also going to start trying to do a little bit more video content. I do want to get back into streaming. Uh, I just don't have as much time as I used to. But that's okay. Uh, I do still want to... I want to get back into video making. Video making is fun. I enjoy editing. Even though I don't enjoy editing. I enjoy it and I don't. It's, it's whatever. Well, I'm, I'm rambling. Whatever. Well, regardless of all that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope to see you again soon in a stream or in the comments of another video. Even if I don't, have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your week. Stay safe. Hopefully I'll see you again soon.